Okay, now we're going to start Chapter 2, which is an in-depth discussion of one-third of pathology. Remember, we said pathology was degenerative diseases, inflammatory diseases, and neoplastic diseases. Well, we're going to deal in this chapter with inflammation. We're going to deal with it in depth as a process in itself rather than describe specific inflammatory diseases. Uh, it's a long topic. It's going to be divided up, I hope, logically. And we might as well start out by saying that our objectives for this chapter will be to understand the sequence of vascular and cellular and chemical mediator events that go on in acute inflammation. We're going to talk about the role of various chemical mediators in kind of a rote-like fashion because they don't always fit in with the sequential flow of the plot. We're going to talk about the three possible outcomes of acute, acute inflammation, uh, which is complete resolution, chronic inflammation or scarring, which is also called fibrosis. We're going to talk about the three morphologic patterns of acute inflammation. We're going to talk about the causes, morphologic patterns, principal cells, minor cells of chronic and granulomatous inflammation as well. So we're going to talk about acute inflammation, chronic inflammation, and granulomatous inflammation. There's a whole bunch of other adjectives that are sometimes put before the word inflammation if you do that little Yahoo search. But uh, those are basically the three main types if you ask a pathologist to rattle off only three. Okay, now, folks, this is the whole chapter right here. Uh, acute inflammation, or if you prefer inflammation in general, because acute can go into chronic, is a sequence of linear events. I always describe it as a Cecil B. DeMille epic because it starts out with something and then it progresses into something else. It's very, very, very linear and it's very, very, very uh, flowing like a Hollywood movie. And really the whole uh, chapter is in this one slide and I'm going to show this you the slide at the end as well. But you have to remember that it's a nonspecific process. It's a protective response. And it starts out with nothing. Uh, anatomically speaking, take normal histology of anything and just picture it in your mind. Well, that's what the tissue looks like before the sequence of events, which we call inflammation. Now, the very first thing that happens in this Cecil B. DeMille epoch is for vasodilatation to occur. And it's usually and primarily at the level of the post-capillary venules. But during this big battle, a lot of other vascular changes occur. But let's just say the very first thing to trigger off inflammation is dilatation of the post-capillary venules. Through a variety of reasons, there is then increased vascular permeability, partly due to the vasodilatation, but also other things. And it's not just at the level of the venules, it's everywhere, capillaries, perhaps even arterioles, certainly the venules. Then we have leakage of exudate, which is the fluid in plasma, except for the cells, into the uh, intercellular spaces. Then we have margination, rolling, and adhesion of neutrophils in that order. Then the neutrophils decide to diapodese or transmigrate through the wall due to a variety of techniques. Then they undergo chemotaxis or they are attracted to areas outside of the blood vessel wall. They are then activated to release all of the substances in their granules, in their uh, lysosomes, uh, and to phagocytize. And in phagocytosis, they recognize the things they're supposed to chew up. They attach to them. They engulf them. 
They kill them, the digestion. They digest them, and bingo, we're done. That's the whole act there. That's the whole chapter. You think I'm not going to talk about it more? You're wrong. Okay, this uh, acute inflammatory sequence, a linear sequence, you have to know the order more than anything. You have to get them correct in order. But the termination can then result as 100 complete resolution back to normal histology again, or as a scar, fibrosis, or as chronic inflammation if there are uh, the factors present which haven't gone away yet. So what are the three outcomes of acute inflammation? 100% resolution, chronic inflammation, or SCAR, otherwise known as uh, fibrosis. Well, that's the whole chapter, so let's get into it now in a little bit more uh, detail. Acute inflammation, first of all, is a protective response, and it's nonspecific. It doesn't occur only with certain types of bugs or antigens or uh, radiation effects or chemicals. It's a nonspecific response. It occurs due to all of the things. If you want to divide that Cecil B. DeMille epic into three general acts, you can. You can call them vascular events, which are the first ones, basically vasodilatation, leakage. Then there are cellular events, which are your uh, chief cell of acute inflammation, the polymorphonuclear uh, neutrophil, or PMN. You can call it a leukocyte if you want, but technically a leukocyte is any white cell. You call it a poly. You call it a neutrophil. You call it a granulocyte. You call it a neutrophil, a granulocyte. I call them everything, but my favorite term is poly. And uh, then we can also remember that there are the mediators of acute inflammation, a whole wide variety of chemicals we're going to discuss briefly and show how they kind of fit into this big uh, epic story. And really, the vascular events are very logical. The cellular events are very flowing. The mediators require a little bit of uh, rote memory, and I'm going to have to whip that on you. Let's talk about the cell. Let's talk about the neutrophil. Call it PMN, PML. Call it a leukocyte. Call it a granulocyte. Call it a polymorphonuclear leukocyte. Call it a polymorph. Let's call it a poly. The reason why I'd like to call it a poly is because when you see polys infiltrating normal histology, you could call that acute inflammation of that tissue. You see polys in an appendix, call it acute appendicitis. You see polys in a uh, gallbladder, call it acute cholecystitis. That's the principle. If, on the other hand, you see monos rather than polys or mononucleated cells, such as lymphocytes and macrophages, and infiltrating that same normal histology. Technically, monos in the appendix would be chronic appendicitis. Monos in the gallbladder would be chronic cholecystitis. Monos anywhere would be chronic anything. So that's the general principle, and we have just learned one-third of all pathology. How do you like that? Let's talk about the four uh, historical highlights, or the four uh, cardinal signs of inflammation. You can't talk about inflammation unless you remember four things, just like you should try to remember the four Marx brothers also. But classically, about, oh, what, 5,000 years ago now? Somebody in Egypt said there's four classical signs to inflammation, rubor, calor, tumor, and dolor. They didn't say it in Latin because that's what before they had Latin. It popped up again during the Roman era. Somebody decided to add a fifth uh, uh, cardinal sign, just like they added a fifth Marx brother, Gummo. And uh, just remember, almost all of those four signs are due to the uh, fact that there is increased flow. If there's increased flow, the tissue will be redder or rubor. If there's increased flow, the tissue will be warmer or calor. If there's increased flow and in swelling, the tissue will bulge, be bumpy like a tumor. And because of this bulging and other uh, cytokines, there could be pain in the area as well. So those are the four 
uh, cardinal signs of inflammation. Uh, a fifth one was uh, functio laser. And we're going to have to stop here because I just uh, went over my 10-minute mark. Bye. Thank you very much.